Welcome to lesson number three. In this lesson, we'll be talking about uh, HTML5 and how you can start using it today. We'll be talking about some of the tools that you'll need to use it and make sure that it's compliant with all browser standards. Uh, we'll also be creating the index page of the SS blog. And this is the index page right here. So we'll just be creating this page. We won't be getting into the back end just yet, but we will in time. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is actually a separate kind of a project from what we'll be working on, but I kind of wanted to show you some of the cool features of HTML5. If you're not using any of it yet, I highly recommend it. It's important to stay on top of standards and using them is the best way to do it. I try to use them as much as possible. Unfortunately, when I built this project, uh, I didn't, uh, well, it's not in there yet. I didn't use um, HTML5, but it's a good idea. There's a lot of things that you can do. Um, the first thing you can do is you can get rid of the old document doc type declaration and you can just do that it's as simple as just the first part of it um, if a browser doesn't support HTML5 it's okay this will just fall back even Google uses this code on their main page so you know it's safe if Google is using it um, other things that you can do is things like this is your meta char set the encoding for the page you can actually get rid of all of this and break it down like this uh, some other cool things that HTML5 does is it even lets you like uh, get rid of the quotes if you want to. Um, and you don't have to necessarily close out your um, elements anymore, but I like to. It keeps me organized, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, within your style tags, uh, hopefully you would actually be referencing an external style sheet, but I'm going to show you something So for ease of use. But you can actually get rid of the type now. You don't need the type listed. It's implied. Um, the same goes for script tags. This is just a uh, pulling in on jQuery, the jQuery library from Google there, and you can get rid of the type on that. Um, some of the other things that you can use instead of doing like a div id equals header, and then we'll do like h1 site. Um, so just pretend like that was the title of the site. Instead of doing that, you can actually do this now, and it's much more semantic. So um, some of the other things that you can use would be like a section. You could do article. If you had like a blog article. Sorry about my typing here. You could do a side, and that would be like for a sidebar. Um, footer. The list goes on and on and on. All you have to do is type in HTML5 elements, and you'll find a site that will pull up all the available options. Um, and these will work in Google and Firefox or Google Chrome and Firefox and Internet Explorer 9, Safari, Opera. Um, but it doesn't work in a lot of less than Internet Explorer 9 browsers. Um, what you would have to do to get them to work in there would be a little bit of JavaScript. And this is the main problem with it is your site does become JavaScript dependent immediately when you decide to use these. But almost all browsers or almost all yeah, people surfing the web these days have JavaScript enabled. So for the most part, you're safe to go unless you're doing something that's going to be reaching a, um, a really large audience. Um, but basically, all you have to do is you could write the JavaScript yourself, just document.create element, and then you could do header. And then you could do the next one, document.create element, and you could do a side that would be your sidebar and basically what this does is it puts these objects into the document object model um, of the browser uh, it, I don't really want to get into all of that but basically the browser stores all of these elements and it stores some basic stylings that it applies to all of these elements um, basically by default so these are in there on older versions of Internet Explorer. Um, and there's actually an even easier way if you don't want to type out any JavaScript. You can do the HTML5 shim or shiv. Either one works. And this is all it is. Just this code right here. Just copy it and paste it into the head of your page. And now it says if, if less than Internet Explorer 9, run this script. And it will basically create all these for you. Um, but there's one other thing that you have to remember. There's always something else, right? You have to go into your style sheet, hopefully be an external one. And so we're calling the header and we're telling it to display block. And that is really important. You'd have to do that with all of them. Header, aside, 
footer, you know, on and on and on. The list goes forever, really. But um, it's a much more semantic way to build your websites, and I highly recommend using it as much as possible. Um, I kind of just wanted to touch on some of the things you can do. I feel like it's a pretty important process if you're going to be designing or building websites on any sort of regular basis. Okay, let's go ahead and get over to the real website now. I just wanted to cover that for fun. And this is where we were last time we said hello world. Since this is a .php page, make sure that your server is running in case we want to test it. Basically, for this, I'm going to have to paste in the code because it's a lot. So there it all is. And you can tell, if you wanted to watch me type all this, you would go insane. You'd lose your mind. And there's lots of pages like this. So I've chosen to copy and paste it in there. And then I'll try to cover all the important highlights. So first thing, we can actually get rid of this. We already just talked about that. So I'm going to go ahead and use my own advice here. Um, we have the docutype, HTML5. We have our head here where we include all of our scripts that we're including. Um, we have our document encoding. And actually, we should even do like, um, oh, well, you know what I'm missing? This is kind of a serious fault. HTML. And we actually want to tell it, oh, I did that backwards. Language equals English. That's important to have our HTML tag in there. Okay, so there's our first flub. I'm glad I went through here and checked. Um, we shorten that. This is our meta name and description. Basically, this is how this is what pulls up the site description if you were to Google it, and they use it for um, basically indexing purposes of your site. Uh, this says dynamic site description because we're going to let the user set their own site description because obviously we can't predict what their site's going to be about. Um, this is a shortcut to the favicon, which would be the little image up here in the corner. We have a spot for Google Analytics here. We're going to let the user set that. Here's our style sheet for now. We're sticking with the normal CSS folder style.css. Um, we can actually get rid of the type. It's not needed. Shorten up our file or make our file size a little smaller there. Um, and I'm for the meantime, I did leave the other style sheet call to the PHP style, but I've just commented it out because we'll insert that later. Um, this is a spot for custom fonts, which we'll get into it later. This is that HTML5 shim that I was talking about. I'm still doing some HTML5 things. I'm kind of mixing and matching because I'm just not totally comfortable myself, but I'm getting there. Uh, site title, and this will be dynamic as well, so I've got it a comment set for it. And now we get into the body of our document, which will be everything that you can see. Um, at the top, it's a div class of top, and the only reason I did that, I just wanted to clarify, is because I wanted this nice little blue line here. There's probably a better way to do that, but that's an easy way that I've learned, and I mean, it doesn't take me but a couple seconds to do that, so I went ahead and did a div class of top, and then I have a wrapper, and the wrapper pretty much wraps everything, including the logo, uh, the blog, everything gets wrapped inside of that. Um, this is the login button, and it gets wrapped by the main wrapper, and here it is. We also have the main container, which is gonna wrap, I guess it even wraps the logo, the blog container. is probably a little redundant. I probably could have gotten by without a main container, but it's there, it's fine. Um, so the blog container is gonna contain the whole blog here, basically just one of these, and then we're gonna tell PHP to keep repeating the process for as many forms as we have for it to fill. Uh, blog title and it's dynamic and then we have a subtitle that's within a span and the reason I do that is so I can style it differently as you can tell here it has a different style this is the title this is the subtitle and it looks different um, then we have the details section author with another span and dynamic content there and another date posted with another span and dynamic content there in the very the very end of that details div. Finally, here I'll just try to get through these as fast as I can. We have the more show hide articles, and this is this button here. We have the blog content itself, which is going to be the article, and it will be dynamic. We have the video itself, and that's the embed code from YouTube, and it will be dynamic. We have our source code button, is all that is, but we'll be using a dynamic link in here so that we can reference our source. Uh, then that's the end of all of our containers. We're just ending them out here. Uh, finally, at the bottom, we have our footer, 
and it is a, basically just a paragraph with a link inside to my website and then we'll be writing some PHP and we can actually we can do that right now we can just go PHP echo date year I think it's capital I And uh, then we have the end of the footer here, and oh, we want to dash there. Basically, all this does, I didn't really cover what I, it is. Basically, all it does is it calls the date um, function, which is built into PHP, and it echoes it out, and um, we just want the year, so that's what it's going to do. And then down here we have our JavaScript. It's best practice to keep your JavaScript at the bottom of a document. The main reason for that is, um, let's say that this script loads really fast. If we had it at the top, it loads really fast and it calls um, one of these elements in here, but it hasn't loaded yet itself. Well, you're going to have problems and you'll have an error on the page and it could cause some serious issues. So basically what you want to do is do it at the very bottom so all of this will load before this ever loads, loads and it can assure you that you're not going to have any problems. Your other option is to do like um, it's a document.ready. So if we we're doing jQuery, you could do like document.ready and then we could do function basically and then you know code goes here um, we can even simple or we can even shorten this quite a bit and do this right here it's the exact same thing but all it says that the document itself is implied the document would be the the uh, well the document itself and it's implied so you can actually skip that and I'll just do the function and basically what happens is it says check to make sure that everything's done when it's all done then you can execute your code so that's basically what that is when we get into the JavaScript section but just to be safe best practice just call it in the bottom and the only things I'm calling here is I'm calling um, the, the miniaturized version of J the jQuery library uh, the miniaturized version of the jQuery UI library which is used for more uh, user interface elements and then I'm calling my own custom JavaScript file which was where we'll write our actual jQuery code so and then we have the body ending and the HTML ending so I'm gonna wrap this up basically this is the index page I will be including it in the source files and hopefully I covered it well enough. I know it's hard to cover this much information. I kind of got in over my head. Uh, it's just a lot of information to be sharing in such a short amount of time, but hopefully it'll make more sense as we keep going. Thanks.